Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar, Back to School Support and Resources for Glencoe Map 6 to 12. My name is Sarah Shuja, and I'm a marketing manager at McGraw Hill based in Dubai. If you can hear my voice, there is a um, hand icon on the right side of your screen. It should be just below your name. Can you please click on the icon if you can hear me? Thank you so much. Uh, before I go on, I'll just give you a brief overview of the session. This is an implementation training session for Glencoe Map 6 to 12. Uh, if you teach grades 6 to 12 and are using Glencoe Map this up upcoming academic year, then you're in the right place and we'll go over the session with you about what your out teaching outcomes can be. We are delighted to have Shelley with us today. Thank you, Shelley, for joining us. We've got moderators for today. Before I begin, my colleague and I are going to be in the background monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. If you want to engage with us, with Shelly, please let us know in the chat box. And we'll be here to help you out. A bit of a background about Shelly before we go on. Shelly is a senior curriculum specialist at McGraw-Hill. And prior to that, she was a 6 to 12 math coach lead curriculum for distance learning, so which is exactly what we're going through right now. A lot of schools are through distance learning and remote learning, and she's already been a lead curriculum writer for one of those. Shelly is, Shelly is very passionate about math, and she believes all students can learn math. So that's a difficult one, because we know students struggle a lot with math. So, and when Shelly's not working, she enjoys spending time with her two teenage boys who play basketball and football. Thank you so much. Uh, Shelly for joining us. I'm going to pass over to my colleague Afsana who just quickly go over the housekeeping slides before we go on with the session. Thank you, Sarish. Um, just to cover off a bit of housekeeping just before we begin. So um, it seems like you have all connected to the audio okay, but just to ensure that your experience during the webinar today is as seamless as possible. If you are experiencing any sound issues, um, we would recommend just calling in using your phone. Um, and to kind of closing down any high bandwidth platforms that may be being used in the home or wherever you are um, on the same internet. The session is being recorded, so if you do miss anything, we will be circulating the recording afterwards. And that email will come through within a week of today, um, and it will also include your certificate. Um, there will be a QA and a at the end, so if you have any questions for Shelley, um, just use the Q&A and the chat box on the right-hand side. Um, we can't unmute you, unfortunately, just because of the way we've set up the webinar. Um, but yeah, like I said, any comments, questions, general queries, just drop them into the chat box and the Q&A. And if you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, I am also available on the chat box. So you can message me privately on there as well. And I will now pass over to Shelley and we can begin. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Shelley McClanahan. I am coming to you from uh, a town called Seminole in Florida in the U.S. And I'm just really excited uh, to be here with you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and so let me, and just to keep my internet going just the right way, I'm going to actually turn off my video. Um, but let's see, there we go. Maybe it'll turn off. <laughs> All right, I'm not quite sure how to work that part, but that's okay. So um, in this training today, we're really going to be focusing in on um, the, the the programs that you see on the screen. So whether you're a, a current user, or brand new to the program, um, I want to make sure that this training is everything that you um, want the training to be. So. Um, if you don't mind, in the chat, if you'll type in um, where you're from, what courses you're currently teaching, and I'll try to focus mostly in on those classes um, or those courses, and then um, just kind of for fun, what's your favorite math symbol, number, or word? And I'll give you just a second to answer that.
I don't know if we have gotten anything in the chat yet. We've received some comments, Shelley, that someone has said they're new. They're brand new. Okay. And what course is that that they're teaching? Grade seven. Grade seven. Okay, great. And All someone right. said their chat function is not working. So uh, I just told them if you can re respond in the Q&A box. Okay. Chat function is not working. You can tell us new. I have been an existing user. So we've got a mix. All right, and what um, what course was she teaching? So I've got seventh grade and I don't see that. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. Not a worry at all. Um, so really, what we're going to focus on today are just kind of the, the digital sides, and I always like to have a little bit of a of um, something a little funny inside here. Um, because, you know, our students nowadays, when if they have a, a print book in front of them, um, a lot of times they, 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 you know, just kind of, how do we turn it on? What do we do? So we are going to really focus on the digital side of it because um, most people who have been teaching, you know, could teach just about anything um, out of any book that's there, but it really is the digital functionality that's different. Um, so we're going to focus in on the ebook and even uh, app based access. So uh, it is possible that even if your students uh, have a smartphone that they would actually be able to uh, access their books directly from their smartphones, um, as well as any tablet or um, uh, uh, any sort of desktop device, any sort of um, uh, laptop device, they'll be able to access that. Uh, we'll take a look at the, we'll do a demonstration of the digital resources and we'll really focus on the things that are um, best for remote learning, including something that we have called Learn Smart. Uh, if you were a previous user, you might not have realized that we have actually updated the uh, e-toolkit with the virtual manipulatives that you all have access to. And then we'll take a little bit of time at the end uh, for some questions and some wrap up. So I just wanted to uh, show this screen that's here. I don't know if anybody wants to take a picture of it or just have some information, um, but it talks about a resources information page that's at the top. And this is um, what we call a Padlet. And so it's just a place where I have put um, a lot of information about the program, uh, any of the trainings that I do with teachers, I try to set up something so that I try to update the information on here so they can uh, get information, you know, kind of timely as things change. Um, the two pictures that are on the screen are what the mobile apps look like. So if you are at the App Store, um, if you're on a tablet device, usually the app looks like uh, the one on the left hand side with kind of the rolling prairie that's there. And if you were on a smartphone, the app usually looks like the one that is on the right hand side. So that can be either one of them, but it's always going to have um, McGraw Hill. And then once they uh, launch into, uh, they need to be uh, signed in the very first time. If you're doing anything, any sort of um, single sign on, they would need to actually uh, go in through a browser window first and then authenticate themselves into it. There's information about all of that um, on the Padlet, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment. And then also for additional um, support and technical issues, there is uh, the uh, web address for how to get to mheducation.com. Lots of really good stuff is on our main website. And then I have my email address down across the bottom. So if after today's training, if there's any questions that you have in specific um, or specifically to one of the programs or something that I show you today uh, and you're not quite sure where to find that, how to utilize it, uh, you can always reach out to me. So I want to show you um, real quick um, what that Padlet looks like. So let me um, share this screen here for you as well. And so um, what you'll see on this one, um, this is what the Padlet looks like. And so in the Padlet, I have it arranged with several different columns across the top. So if you kind of scroll over, you'll see all of the different columns um, that are here. And within each one of the columns, is any of the information that um, I have either created or that someone on our team has created. So we have done a lot of work um, with remote learning. We know that that is definitely a hot button topic for people right now. So you'll find information on uh, remote learning resources. 
There will be more of these uh, found at the MHEducation.com, and it's usually as soon as those come out, um, I try to uh, move those over to here as well. Um, let's see what this is across the top. Um, and then uh, you'll see for lesson planning and differentiation, I've created a video. I'm going to give you a really quick snippet today of the brand new um, e-toolkit with the new virtual manipulatives. Uh, but to get more information about those, you can come right here and watch this video. Uh, we've got user's guides, all kinds of good stuff is inside here. You're also going to hear me talk about Learn Smart. And again, um, we if it, if it goes a little fast and you're wondering, whoa, I really like the idea of that. Um, you notice that there is both a student version of a quick start guide as well as a teacher version. And then here's a quick little, <clears throat> excuse me, a nine minute video on exactly how to uh, utilize LearnSmart, which is provides adaptive practice um, for end of course assessments. So it's a great tool that uh, in, in this um, kind of world of distance learning, I don't know uh, how your location is uh, handling and how much distance learning your teachers are having to utilize, but um, we have a lot here um, in the States. In fact, my sons had just gone back to school and, and one of them is now um, under quarantine himself because of an exposure. So I know um, how important it is to have the best in the digital resources and an understanding of those. So we're gonna make sure that you have that understanding. Um, assessment is always something that people generally reach out to me afterwards about. Um, I will show you a couple of quick ways how to build the test, but I want you to know that this little quick uh, how to guide for mathematics. This is kind of took our 87 page users manual and I narrowed it down to the top uh, to 3 pages and it just really contains the top information um, that teachers would want to do. So I do show you 3 ways how to build a test, um, how to edit those questions, how to add algorithmic questions. I'm changing multi-mode, some good helpful hints show here, and then even how to share a test in terms of um, exporting tests to share with um, other colleagues, how to print, how to do um, assignments on, online, because the test engine itself will allow students to um, take that assessment online. So um, I'll show you how to do it, but I want you to know that there's a, there's a great house to guide that's right here. And then we also have a recorded training webinar that is everything on e-assessment shows up right there. If any of you all are utilizing um, Google Classroom, there are documents here that talk about the workflow for how to utilize Google Classroom. And I will show you how to link our resources directly into Google Classroom. Um, there is information about Alex. And Alex even has its own Padlet of resources that uh, kind of similar to this Padlet, but it's everything for Alex. So if your location uses Alex, you have that. Um, I also found some good things about some remote learning ideas and then um, just any additional help, anything, any additional resources such as um, opening things in Chrome, that kind of stuff. I try to put that information into there. So I'm going to pause for just a second and see if there's any questions on um, the Padlet itself, and I just want to remind you that in order to get to the Padlet, um, it is this bit.ly link that is across the top, and then it is this password to be able to get into there. So I'm going to pause for just a second. If you have any questions about that um, or comments, you can, of course, comment in uh, the Q&A box, and I will wait to see um, if there's anything that is good. Okay, well then, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna remind everyone, if you have any questions for Shelly at any point, please do let us know. We wanna make this as interactive. So any questions, please let us know, either in the chat box or in the Q&A, whatever it works for you. I believe the chat function is probably not working for some people, so you can type it in the Q&A box or either ways, we're happy to pick up. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I will also remind you, as well, um, that we do also have a, um, let me switch over to this screen. Um, we do also have a great um, website at mheducation.com. Um, anytime you have any questions, you can always go to mheducation.com. Um, if I go to the box right here that says pre-K-12, um, you'll see that we are doing um, lots of resources on remote learning, 
Um, there is usually additional information on training, um, at home learning. So lots of good stuff shows up here. So I always encourage people to bookmark um, both of those because I think um, both the Padlet and our MHEducation.com site really do provide a lot of really good information. Um, for teachers and even for parents as well, because there's some good information that's there for parents. So um, I do want to jump in and we'll get connected. Um, but I do want you to know if you've ever used connected before, um, we actually have a new um, web address. So we're, go we're now going to my.mheducation.com. Um, it has replaced connected, but this one will still work. So in your books, it's going to reference connected.mcgraw-hill.com. Um, but people wanted one that was a little bit uh, shorter in length. So um, either one of these will work. But we are uh, slowly transitioning over to my.mheducation.com. And uh, if you do not already have your own username and password, if you don't already have yours, you may use username and pass the usernames that are on the screen. The password for both of them is MHE 2020 math, and it is all lowercase for the password. So it is case sensitive for the password. And, uh, and then you will use the username that's up here. And um, if you have your own account, we always encourage you to utilize your own account for those uh, resources because you have the ability to customize uh, and really uh, have a much better experience if you are using your own username and password. But if for some reason it has not been set up yet, or in case yours ever goes down, uh, you would have these as a backup. Uh, we do also ask that you do not share the usernames and passwords with students because um, both the teacher editions and the student editions are located there. So we want to make sure that this is something for uh, teacher eyes only. So I am going to switch over now and we're actually going to get into um, the program itself. So I do want to point out to you um, that there's a little bit uh, a tight if you when you log in um, each time you will see both the teacher edition and the student edition in your book bag. And so that really makes a big difference if you are teaching Algebra 1 or above, and I'll show you that experience in just a moment. Um, but for today, since I know I have someone on the call who is teaching Course 2, I'm actually going to go into Course 2. So I'll present mostly um, from this middle school program, but know that the things that I'm showing will uh, also pertain into the high school programs as well. So what we will notice across here um, is that this is the main dashboard. And whether you're a teacher or a student, this dashboard is going to look the same. Um, of course, you know, you, the students won't see anything like scheduled lesson plans or assignments, um, but they will actually be able to see any of their assignments that you've made through the McGraw-Hill system showing up here on the side. Um, I am going to, uh, if you're trying to follow along, I'll try to go a little slow so that you get an opportunity to um, participate. Sometimes people like to kind of do a split screen and have uh, my experience on half the screen and, and theirs on the others. Um, other people like to just uh, watch and kind of follow along with what I'm doing and then go back and watch the recording. Um, a little bit slower and be able to participate on your own. So um, whichever way works best for you, please feel free to do that. I'm going to go first in the upper right hand corner over here where I'm circling underneath the words teacher center and I'm going to go into um, the ebook. And so the ebook that I'm in right now, let me actually go to the very front cover of this. The ebook that I'm in now is is here for course two. Um, all of our ebooks are going to behave exactly the same. Uh, to navigate through the ebooks themselves, you're going to come into the upper left hand corner where the menu is. And then you can choose um, whichever chapter it is that you want to um, get into utilize. So let's say that I go into chapter two. The first thing that you're going to notice is that it always, uh, the book always appears as two screens or two pages are showing there. So this is as if you had flipped open the book and had it laying in front of you. Um, not no one that I know of um, actually utilizes their book that way. So I do want you to see in the down at the very bottom of the screen, there is a single rectangle. And if you switch to that single rectangle, it will go to a one page view. And as you notice, when my mouse rolls over it, it gives me the words one page view. So I'm going to click on that. And then to navigate, 
I'm going to use the arrows on the left and right hand side of the screen. So that's going to let me be able to navigate through my book. The other thing I want you to notice is, <clears throat> is that you can come up into this area that's right here. Um, you'll see that there is a magnifying glass. It is a zoom in tool, so you can zoom in a little at a time, which also then activates a slider bar over to the far right that, where you can slide up and down. Um, but what you'll also notice is that to the, then, then you can change the size, how zoomed in it is with a little slider bar. But I prefer actually the tools that are here on the, that's just to the left of that. And that is because this one will very quickly fit the width. So if we're doing some sort of presentation in class, um, projecting somehow, um, this will actually give you that ability to either fit the height of the page or to fit the width of the page, but you also always have the ability to control um, that zoom if you choose. So um, I'm going to actually fit the width on this. And I want you to see that um, within each one of these, so we're going to start first with middle school, then I'm going to switch over real quick to the high school book. Um, you're going to see that there is the essential question. Um, I've got uh, my math practices and standards. Every uh, chapter is going to start off with a math in the real world. And then at the very bottom, it does talk about foldables. In the middle school programs, we actually have, if you have the consumable versions of the books, the foldables are actually on, in the back of the book. So these foldables, I'm going to quickly switch over to show you. Um, the foldables in the very back of the book actually, um, and I don't actually, they don't show on my digital one that's here, um, but the foldables do provide um, the ability, the three-dimensional graphic organizers where students really can uh, explain their thoughts and really kind of organize everything. Just as if you're brand new to utilizing this, what I've seen a lot of teachers do with foldables is to uh, get a Ziploc bag, um, three hole punch that, and um, just using a handhold punch, have the students keep that in their binders and then they can just add the foldables into there and they don't lose them. Some people do it with different envelopes and those types of things, but lots of different ways to manage them because they are great ways for students to uh, organize their mathematical thinking. So that is how each and every one of the chapters is going to open. Um, as I turn the page, you'll see on the back side of the chapter opener, you'll always see, you'll see a section that says, what tools do you need? We do see the vocabulary. You'll oftentimes see some sort of activity utilizing that vocabulary. Here's a great um, graphic organizer that helps students understand. So we'll see different study skills, um, a variety. This is always going to be just a little bit different, um, but definitely very appropriate with the vocabulary that they're about to learn. As I turn forward, I'm going to see we always ask students what do they already know? What do they want to find out? So we've got um, kind of some a built in um, anticipation guide and then also a part that says, when will you use this? And I'm going to zoom in on this part This when will you use this part? Because I want you to notice um, that it does say go online to read the graphic novel amusement park prices. What is the full price? And if you look over here on the side, you know that this is a video. And every time there is something um, on the page that has some sort of um, additional resource that goes along with it, you will see these icons down across the very bottom of the page. And those are active links. So if I wanted to see this um, uh, graphic novel acted out, I can actually click the one down here at the bottom that is the watch. It's kind of a play button. I can click on watch and it links me over to my resources section where I then have the ability to play this video. And this video would act, um, help us answer that age old question. Um, you know, why do, why do we have to learn this? Who utilizes it? Um, but that is where they can go in and they can get to um, those videos. And then what they just need to do after that.
can't hear you, Shelley. You're on mute. Not quite sure how that happened. I was trying to move some screens across the top. Sorry about that. Um, but what you will notice is that when you were in um, your uh, student edition slash teacher edition part that's here, anytime you click on any of the icons at the bottom, it does open that icon in a tab across the very top. So with those tabs, oops. So with those tabs, you'll notice that um, it's just linking you over to your resources screen. So that is the quick and easy way um, to get to uh, each one of those resources. Um, let me go back and go back to the full page view that's here, and I'm going to turn the page. And many of the, oops, then we are going to see that we always have an are you ready? So this is going to help um, diagnose those prerequisite skills that students should have learned last year. We also know that formative assessment um, in this coming school year is going to be very important, especially in areas where students may have missed several weeks of the prior school year. They may have switched to distance learning where we're, we're that quick transition. We're not sure exactly what they learned or what they did not learn. Um, so I always encourage teachers to utilize this Are You Ready feature. So the quick review just kind of gives them a little bit of information about that, and then it gives them a quick check. When we go online or when we're in um, the resources, I'm going to show you some things that you might utilize um, in addition to this or in lieu of this. Um, so you're always going to see the are you ready, a quick review, and then some quick check problems, and then students can demonstrate. They can kind of grade their own across the bottom. Turning forward one more page. Um, this chapter ha actually happens to start off with an inquiry lab. I'm going to go to the table of contents on the left-hand side and just show you that whenever you look in the um, lessons themselves, you're going to see that some of the lessons have an inquiry lab that happens just before them. So in this case, we have an inquiry lab on percent diagrams, and then we're going to go into the lesson percent of a number. Now, I know as teachers, the temptation is always, okay, well, we're, we're kind of short on time. Um, we don't know if we're going to be able to do these inquiry labs, and what I strongly suggest that you always find time to do the inquiry labs because the more time that you spend um, in incorporating those, the smoother your lessons will go because the students will have learned a lot about the concept through those inquiry labs. So these are very teachable events for the students. These are also something that you could start um, synchronously with your students, whether it's um, in a classroom or um, on, uh, via um, a, a chat kind of uh, function like Zoom or WebEx, something like that. Um, but there's always some sort of hands-on activity that really gets kind of a hands-on, minds-on situation. So these hands-on activities are something that you could do with them or you could encourage students to do kind of um, um, in pairs, but where I see most teachers utilizing these hands-on activities um, is kind of in a whole group kind of setting. We're doing these together, we're working through those. Then what you'll see is that there's usually a part that says investigate. And let me zoom in on this part that says investigate, because I want you to notice that there are two heads. So that means that this is something really good for students to work with a partner and to talk about. So even if students are distance learning, they can still kind of have a conversation, um, whether you use breakout rooms or whether they call each other on the phone. It is a great way because they're really kind of bouncing thoughts off of each other as they go through and do those. You'll then notice that they're going to analyze and reflect, so we're going to kind of bring it all together. Again, they're still working with a partner, and they could be working with a, a, a partner in the classroom, but they could also be working with their parents. So this is not something uh, this is a great activity for an asynchronous learning um, type of situation. And then they're always asked to create, and so they're on their own. So um, I just always kind of tell teachers to let the heads, the number of heads that are provided on the screen, guide them into the best way to utilize those. As I turn the page, um, then you'll see that we get directly into the lesson itself. So this is the lesson that follows that inquiry lab. You'll see we have the focus on the essential question. So we had an essential question at the chapter level, and now we narrow it down a little bit more at the lesson level. 
again, incorporating real world links. And then you'll see that for every example, every single example, this is true in both middle school and high school, every single example, you're going to see this icon shows to the side of it. Sometimes you see more than one icon, but you're going to see this icon for sure. And that is a tutor. Notice that this same icon is down in my dashboard across down here in the bottom. And if I click on the one that says tutor, this links me over. And a tutor is a teacher walking students step by step through an example that is similar to one that's in their book. It is not the same problem, but it is similar. This is perfect for those students oh. who may have been absent who may need another look or for parents who are looking to help their students. So um, I'm going to just going to make Mr. Adams talk a little faster here, but you're going to see he's going to walk them through very uh, much. And there's audio. Great. I'm not sure if the audio is coming through, uh, um, but he's going to walk them through the same type of um, uh, explanation of a problem that is similar to what as a teacher you would do in your classroom. So again, it is not the same problem, um, but it is a different problem. You'll also notice that we have the worked out solution that's over here with the little blue coaching notes that are there. And so they get an opportunity to practice. So all of our programs are going to look exactly the same um, in terms of following that same process, the examples, the tutors, and being able to access them across the bottom. The biggest difference between middle school and the high school programs is that at middle school, because this is um, a consumable book option where students can actually be writing um, in the margins, answering questions, those types of things, we have a special feature that is only in the teacher edition, and that is this button in the lower left-hand corner that says answers on and off. So if you are a teacher, you can actually turn the answers on and off in our middle school programs. That is also helpful as we move into um, doing homework is that that gives you the ability to actually display the answers within the homework as well. So I'll show you that um, you don't have that option um, with the high school, but I'll show you that the, the um, high school one in just a moment. Um, the middle school one, you do have the uh, yellow stripe down the side that indicates it's a homework uh, practice page. Uh, you will see that we have independent practice. Some of the problems have an, a pink house around them. Notice that it's an icon, so it's going to be down here on the dashboard. I can click on the icon. And so that means that any of the problems that have the little pink house, the students can actually access a step, fully worked out step-by-step -step solution to that particular problem. So it's a great way to share with students this is what their work should look like. Um, and also just kind of giving the support. So those have been very strategically chosen um, to, uh, to foster um, a sense of accomplishment as students are going through. So we're going to see independent practice tied back to specific examples. Um, we're always going to see in all of our programs, you're going to see hot problems. That stands for higher order thinking. And then you're going to see that we have a page of extra practice. So a front back page of regular homework practice, a, a second page that is front back of extra practice. And that's exactly what it is. It just gives students extra practice um, with the types of questions from within their lesson. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that these problems were consecutively numbered, which is definitely very helpful. So the, the regular practice ended at question number 24. And this practice, let me zoom in a little bit, starts at question number 25. So um, that is a great um, kind of way just to really help with organization. There is always some power up test practice. So these are um, paper pencil versions of um, the types of questions students might see if they were taking a digital assessment. And then there's always going to be spiral review. Notice I'm in the seventh grade book and we're spiraling back to some sixth grade concepts. These are to keep the, and even fifth grade concepts, these are to keep those concepts fresh in their mind, but also because these are concepts that are potentially going to be used in um, an upcoming lesson. So we're going to constantly be spiraling back um, to those. So that is the middle school book. Let me show you really quickly the difference between um, the high school uh, algebra one and above. 
In Algebra 1 and above, you have both the teacher edition and student edition in all of them. Um, if you are projecting or presenting from the ebook in one of these upper level courses, you do not want to use your teacher's edition to present from your ebook. And let me show you very quickly why. And so notice the navigation is going to be the same, but here is all of the information. It is truly your teacher's edition. So even if you were to zoom in um, on the pages, we went to a single page view, you would not want to use this because you'll notice that the answers do show up right here. So what do we give you instead? Well, that is, if, you, if I click in the menu and I go back to Connect Ed, I actually can open up the student edition. So if you are presenting from um, Algebra 1 or above, you will want to utilize the uh, student version if you were doing um, projecting that book in your classroom. Um, you'll notice that the icons are, uh, the navigation is exactly the same. We're going to choose in the upper left-hand corner. We're going to go to my chapter. You're going to still see, um, you're going to have a then and a now. You're going to notice that there is a speaker icon. This was there in the middle school one as well, but this is a full audio read of the book, but just some things that are just slightly different. Um, the foldables are not in the back of the book, but we encourage students to utilize those to create their own, um, whether they are utilizing um, uh, paper pencil, or I'm sorry, whether they're using, utilizing regular notebook paper or whether they're utilizing graph paper, um, totally different ways to do that. You'll see that um, we do talk about an interactive student guide sometimes, and these are just some additional um, questions that you that complement many of the sections. I'll show you where to get those. Um, but so just a little bit different um, type of navigation, um, types of resources, but these also do have, if I come up here in the upper left-hand corner, um, these actually um, lessons do have explore um, activities that are very similar to the uh, inquiry activities at the middle school level. So be sure that you check out those explore activities. Many of them do also incorporate things like graphing technologies, graphing calculators and such. All right, one thing, especially if you're brand new that you may not notice about this is I mentioned that there is an interactive student guide. That interactive student guide takes um, the questions that are presented. So let me kind of scroll forward just a little bit. Teachers asked us when we created this book, they said, we want more um, questions that really kind of take it to the next level when our students are doing their practice. Um, we, we, we want more level two and level three types of questions. So what we did was we created something that's called the interactive student guide. And the way to activate and to get to the interactive student guide, the quickest and easiest way is at the lesson level. It only shows up on the very first page of every lesson, but you're going to see right here in pink at the very top, you zoom in so you guys can see it, it says link to ISG. And if you click on that, it actually links over. So the ISG pages give some additional examples but they also give more level two and level three types of questions. So we do have many teachers um, who choose to utilize this as their homework piece that they are utilizing with their students. So again, where did I get that? If I'm in the ebook, I go to the upper left-hand corner, I go to the very beginning of any lesson any one of the lessons, at the very top, it says link to ISG, and you can link directly to the ISG. And when you're in the ISG, to get back to the book, you just click the pink again, and it links back to the student edition. So very easy to navigate through there. Um, it if I zoom in on this, I will show you that we have a great feature in the high school ones that's the then, the now, and the why. This information at the middle school level is in your teacher's edition, however. But you'll notice that, again, we continue with those fully worked out solutions, um, explanations that are here. Again, here is that tutor icon. 
and there is that tutor icon across the very bottom. So you're going to see that there's lots of support that is built in for your students. Um, in terms of that, and then there's always these different um, icons that are down across the bottom. They directly hot link over to those, but I'm going to show you those from a little bit of a different um, aspect um, in just a moment. So before I move into our resources screen, I just wanted to pause for a moment and see if there are any questions in the question and answer box. Nothing. Okay. Well, feel free to interrupt me if something does pop up inside there. Um, so I'm going to now go, I'm going to leave my, um, my um, book. So that's there. And we'll be back in my 7th grade teacher center. And what I want you to notice is up in the upper left hand corner. So this, everything I'm going to show you from this point forward applies to both middle school and to high school. But I'm going to go on the upper left hand corner where it says menu. And in menu, um, there's lots of good stuff that's here. So Connect Ed is always how you get back to your main book bag. So if you teach um, course two and course one, um, you can easily navigate back and forth. Class management um, is where it's very easy to follow the steps if, you're, um, if you need to create a class. Um, if you are having your students set up their own accounts, um, you'll just need to be sure that you talk with your um, whoever is in charge at your at your school. Um, one of the questions I get asked, and I do have a video about this on the Padlet, um, people ask about the class code because it asks the students for a class code. Every teacher has their own unique class code, and you'll just click, you'll come into here, and you'll click on that class code that's there. So your students would need this eight-digit um, or eight-character um, number, but you would, it would be specific to your particular class. But you, all of your classes will show in this little drop-down menu that's here. There's a lot of great help information about how to build these classes. You even have the ability to share a class um, with other schools. I'm sorry, with other teachers at your same school. And then you can decide what, what level of access you want to give them. So do you want them to be able to modify your lesson plans, your class management, your assignment tracker, those types of things. So um, there's lots of great information about sharing on our website as well. I'm going to go back to the upper left hand corner and click menu. And um, we're going to go into resources next, but let me tell you real quickly, if I, if I make an assignment to students, it's going to show up in my assignment tracker. It'll show up on my calendar. I can even upload my own resources. I do have some help that's built in and clicking on home at any time will always get me right back to this screen. We go back to menu. Plan and present gives us pre-made lesson plans. We'll come to there as soon as we finish with resources. We'll talk about assessment, but remember there's also that great handout on the Padlet for the assessment. And then if you scroll down, you'll see something that says professional development. If you go to that professional development, you will see that there is a quick start course. This is a kind of a self-paced quick start course, very similar to what you were doing with me today. And then we also have a longer implementation course. These are all a series of small, short videos that you can uh, use. Um, I like to call it, it's kind of PD in your PJs. Um, so you can watch this at your leisure. It's also a great place to um, get information about the program. And then you'll notice on the side that we have got all different um, videos that are over here. So if you're an administrator and you are supporting, looking to support your, your teachers, you can do that. There's information about um, how to utilize Sketchpad, um, Dynazite foldable videos. So all kinds of great things show up underneath professional development. So I always encourage teachers um, after watching this video, um, if you just need kind of a refresher in a couple of days, you can of course watch this recording, but you can also come in and do this quick start course or the implementation course. 
And then also down here, people don't always notice that these are down here, but um, students can send messages to you through the McGraw-Hill system. And you can also open up discussions. So what is nice about discussions? Um, and I'm going to come into here. So I was down at the very bottom of the screen underneath the discussions. And I think that in this day and age of remote learning, a lot of people are starting to use the discussions feature. And so it's automatically disabled to start with, but I'm going to click enable. Or actually, it's already enabled, but sometimes um, it, it might say that it's disabled. So if yours is disabled, I encourage you to enable it. And you can create a topic inside here. So I can create a topic if I want my students to discuss and think of this as kind of like a blog. Um, students can, you could pose a, a specific question that you want your students to do inside here um, and they could answer that. I do encourage, until, especially until you get to know your students, um, that you turn this moderation on so um, your, that means that you get to see everything that the students have created, but then you get to enable the um, responses that you like. So you can create your own discussion from scratch down here across the bottom, or I'll show you as we make assignments to our students, we can turn on the discussion feature with those as well. But what I generally suggest, so let me do that one more time with you, is that you go menu in the top left hand corner, scroll down to discussions, make sure that they are enabled. And then um, just uh, to, if you just click where it says create new topic just to do it the, for the very first time, set your moderation for discussion topic to the on position. I just think that that will be very helpful um, in making sure that students, they never can post anything um, anonymously, but I just think um, in a blog situation, I prefer to see what they posted and then make my decision um, about uh, whether or not they should see that. Um, so we're gonna go back, back in the top left. Let me go ahead and cancel this one. We'll go back in the top left and we're gonna go to the third option down that says resources. Now, in the resources, this is the place where McGraw-Hill has taken all of our resources. So if you're at all those icons that were the very bottom of the student edition, we've taken all of those icons, all of those resources, and we have organized them um, by chapter and then by lesson. So when you come into here, if you click in the chapter button, you're going to see that there are um, unit-based resources. Um, there is um, program-based resources. There's all kinds of good stuff inside here. I'm going to start first with program resources. So I'm scrolling to the very bottom. And underneath program resources, you'll see that it um, links me over. I can get directly to my e-toolkit that's down here and any additional resources that we have. So you'll see that we have um, a link to get into Learn Smart. So you'll see that this is how we get to Learn Smart. This is that uh, teacher and, and student guide, as well as a correlation to the topics that you might want to use in Learn Smart. Um, you can also see if I switch from program resources and I go back to, let's go back to that chapter two on percent. And it automatically defaults to the chapter overview. A couple of things in the chapter overview that I want to call your attention to. The first one is this one called the Quick Review Math Handbook. A lot of people have referred to this as kind of the Cliff's Notes of Math. The Quick Review Math Handbook is just that. It provides a quick review of the top math concepts that we are working with with our students. Um, this is something that students, it is just a straight PDF. Your students can open this, they can save it directly onto any device, but it has some hot words and it has hot topics. I'm gonna quickly scroll down past um, some of this so that you guys can see what I'm talking about with this. Um, when we talk about these, they are different sections, so they're, this does not match the section that's in the book. It matches the section that's in the table of contents for the hot words, hot topics, but this is a great supplemental resource. It is very, very basic in terms of um, what kind of information it provides, 
but it is a great kind of way to help our students really get another look at the topics. So there's always going to be some explanation, check it out, and then there's always going to be um, practice questions that follow after that. So you'll see check it out, and then you'll see it talks about that there are some exercises that are here. This um, has become a teacher and parent favorite um, in the distance learning environment. Um, because of the fact that it really is just very specific information um, that really supports exactly what's inside the book. So the hot words and hot topics um, are definitely something that um, we know that our parents um, and students are really getting a lot of use out of um, all across the world. Um, quick review skills, so I don't have time to go into all of these. You can feel free to go into them. Um, but the main ones that I would focus on at the chapter level are the Quick Review Math Handbook, the Family Letter. It is available in both English and in Spanish. This is something um, provides an overview of the chapters um, as well as at-home activities. That is only there for the middle school courses, um, but it is a great little family letter. There's that video. Um, and then what you're going to see is, as I, I'm going to switch this from being 12 results per page to being 48, so I can see as many things as possible. I still notice that I have two pages um, to look at. But as I scroll down, I want to call your attention to um, there is a, uh, a diagnostic test that's here. And then there are, um, let me see down here. So there's a couple of different resources, a couple of different things that are here. So there is a diagnostic test. And if you roll your mouse over the top of anything, it um, kind of gives you a little bit of information um, about what that resource is. So here we have um, a diagnostic test. You're going to see that there is a pretest. Um, and then we've got just some additional resources that show up here. I would absolutely utilize these diagnostic tests to diagnose the prerequisite skills that our students may or may not have from the prior year. These, I believe, will be one of your best sources of um, making sure that we don't have any unfinished learning from last year, and I think will help guide you and your students into how can we do, um, instead of reteaching everything from last year, how can we do some co-requisite teaching? How can we kind of embed that information into what we're doing? Um, it also lets you kind of individualize that uh, instruction with your students. So I would give this diagnostic test to my students. Um, Notice that you have it as a PDF version. You also have it as a Word document, and then, of course, the answers are here. I would not utilize this diagnostic test as a what we call a gradable event. I would ask my students to do the very best that they can on this. If they're doing it from home, do not get any help from a mom, a dad, a book, no other resource. This is something that just says, out of the gate without any help from anyone or anything, show me what you know. And so this is a great tool to do that. And then notice it says um, it diagnoses the, the skills that students need for success in the upcoming chapter. And then it says you can utilize the Are You Ready worksheets. So depending on how a student does on the diagnostic test, you'll see that there's a series of Are You Ready worksheets. And if you just look here, they all look like, well, they might be the same because they all say, are you ready, and PDF, but they are different. This one is, are you ready, practice. So this would be utilized if your students took that diagnostic test and they're almost there. You kind of feel like they got a little bit of information about it last school year, um, but they might need to just kind of freshen up their skills a little bit. This one is just provide some practice with those kinds of questions. It's called, are you ready practice? The second one down here is called, are you ready review? If you find that your students have not mastered the content from the prior year, you may choose to utilize this, are you ready review, which is going to have maybe two examples built into it and then some practice problems for them to be able to do. If you know that if you have some students who need this worksheet and some students who need this worksheet, 
and you have other students who definitely got a really good handle on it from last year, you can utilize the Are You Ready Apply, which is going to give some word problem practice with those skills. Notice that all three of these worksheets, Are You Ready? So here's the practice as a PDF, as a Word document, and, as, and with an answer key that goes along with it. All of these are also found in our assessment engine, and you can give them um, digitally to your students, and I'll show you how to get to those. If instead you just wanted your students to do this, so let's say that we're getting ready to start school, I want all of my students to do this diagnostic test, I can click the little gear that's here, and I can assign this resource to my students, I can share it with Google Classroom, or I can download it to use with other programs. If I were to choose assign this resource, I can call it whatever I want. I'm just gonna call it try your best. I can type whatever directions I have here, um, do this without any outside assistance. I can change the font size, I can change the color, I can decide which students get it, which classes of students get it, you have all of that functionality. And then if you remember, we talked about the discussions. So I showed you that last thing. If I wanted to make it open this up for discussion, I can create a discussion thread about it. And if I want to moderate it so that I don't so that I can only enable the ones, the responses that I want, I can choose to moderate that discussion thread as I go through. So this one means that the stu students can go to the discussion and see all of the things that other students have posted, or I can moderate that. So it's totally up to you if you decide to utilize that discussion thread or not. And then you just click assign and it makes that assignment to the students. So they, the students are going to see that um, on, I got to make an assignment, I got to choose a student, um, but the students will see that on their to-do list. So it's just that easy. It is also just that easy if instead you were utilizing Google, Google Classroom, you can share with Google Classroom. You'll just need to have it linked. So you'll have your Google Classroom linked and then you can just choose whichever class and do your normal workflow in Google Classroom. Also here, you're gonna see, so in addition to that diagnostic test, you're gonna see that there is a pretest. I generally discourage people from utilizing the pretest. Um, this would be if you thought maybe your students had, had learned this concept in a prior grade level, um, what you're about to be teaching. Um, this is kind of, uh, this is the, the, what they are going to be learning in this chapter. Um, so if you needed to do a pretest and a post-test, that's where you could get that. And um, there is a multilingual e-glossary. This may be of help um, for you and your students. Um, this multilingual e-glossary that is here, um, you can actually download um, a glossary in any um, of the particular languages that are there. So you can get to that multilingual glossary. Sometimes there's PD, um, but so I just encourage you, whatever course it is that you were in, that you just kind of scroll down and find um, the resources. So that's the chapter overview. I'm going to switch instead to a lesson. And now my resources that are here support the teaching of that lesson. So things that are helpful for you. Um, here is a quick check. So if you'd like to start your class off with a five minute check, um, a bell ringer, something of that sort, know that you do have a quick check that you can utilize at the very beginning. Notice that the answers are at the very bottom. So if you need to adjust the size of your screen, um, you can do that to be able to show the students all of that information that is there. Um, you'll see the tutors. So here's my real world examples. Here is my um, quick review math handbook. So we took, and when I showed you before the program resources, you saw the whole book at one time. This is telling you that the, here are specific pages out of that book that work well with this chapter and with this lesson. So some people choose to not download the whole thing and just pull these individuals completely up to you. And then what I want you to see is that for every single one of our lessons, 
in all of our grades from six all the way through high school, there are a variety of worksheets that you have the ability to utilize. At the middle school level, um, this one is called reteach. I think at the, at the high school level, um, let me check real quick um, for the exact wording of that one. Let me go into my resources and I'll go to a lesson just to show you it looks exactly the same. Um, we're going to see um, it's called study guide and intervention. So study guide and intervention at the um, algebra one and above level. And it's called reteach at the middle school level. Same thing is, but that's exactly what it does. It gives some additional examples as well as some practice problems to do. So if you're looking to make assignments to your students and you need to, um, you don't want to utilize the problems that are inside the book or you need more problems in addition to what's inside the book, you might choose to utilize one of the worksheets. Here you'll notice that you have a reteach worksheet as a PDF a Word document, and of course your answer key. So you have reteach, you have skills practice, you have homework practice, you have problem solving practice, you have extra practice, and you have enrichment. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six worksheets at the middle school level. If I switch to high school, I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna actually choose this one to worksheets, and I'm going to see that I have study guide intervention, skills practice, practice worksheet, word problem practice, and enrichment. So I have six at the middle school. I have five at the high school. But at the high school level, you also have something that is called the study notebook, which is going to provide some graphic organizers for students in um, understanding exactly what they are doing. So especially if you're teaching geometry, there's some really good ones in there. Um, but these are based on Cornell style note taking system. So you have an extra um, uh, uh, practice worksheet at middle school and at the high school books, you have the actual study notebook resource that's there. Now, one of these in particular is one that I am very, very fond of, and that is um, the one that is called homework practice. This homework practice worksheet. These questions are different than the book, than the questions that are inside your book, right? But what is special about this homework practice worksheet is that we have included it in our assessment engine. So you could actually assign this to students to do. They could do this paper pencil, and maybe if you're working in a remote situation, they could upload this to you, um, but then uh, they could actually input their answers online and have their homework graded instantly. So if that is something that is important to you, keep in mind the homework practice worksheet as I go into the assessment engine in just a moment. So homework practice worksheet in all of our programs has been digitized and is available for online homework. Something you'll want to know about for all of you um, is the eSolutions manual. The eSolutions manual, you'll see it referenced in several different places. But what this does for you is that this provides a fully worked out step-by-step -step example to every single problem that is inside the book. So I'm going to choose lesson two, three. I'm going to choose last night for homework. I gave the students numbers one to seven, number 12 to um, 17, and um, um, number 24 to 29 whatever problems it was that I gave my students for homework. I can choose to create a detailed solutions guide, just an answer key, or if I uncheck both of them, I'm just actually printing the questions that are inside their book. But I'm gonna choose a solutions manual. I'm gonna choose to print to PDF, and I'm gonna choose two columns just so that more shows up on one page, and I choose print. It takes just a moment for it to generate, but you can generate this um, whenever you need ahead of time. It is just a straight PDF, but notice that it is the fully worked out solution to every single problem that is inside the book. Where we see many um, teachers utilizing this, um, especially in a remote learning situation, 
is that the students do their homework and then the teacher will provide this to the parents so that they, so you could download this, you could email this directly to the parents so that the parents can help their, they can help check the homework and they can see the solution that goes along with it. So that your face-to-face -face time that you have is not spent in trying to go over problems where students may have just made a minor math error. The actual, the parents can go through and help their students in doing this. So this um, definitely has become a, um, a extreme favorite um, of teachers to utilize. And that is called the eSolutions Manual. And what I encourage you to do, anytime you find something that you think will be helpful for you is that you click the little star and that adds it to your favorites menu. So anytime you find something that you really like, you can click the star and you, when you log in each day, you will find it is on your favorites menu and you can just as easily take anything off of your favorites menu by unchecking that box across the bottom. So at the lesson level, you'll see a variety of different um, resources that support the teaching of that particular lesson. I always encourage people to kind of look through all of the um, options that are there. If you want to utilize Sketchpad, um, if you've ever used it or wish you had it, um, we are now providing the download of that free of charge to both parents or to both teachers and students. So you can always go to the download instruction and there is the code there in terms of being able to download that. So lots of great things are at the lesson level. I'm going to click in the center right here just to show you the big picture of the whole program. And that is in our keyword search. This shows you all of the resources that are available to help you in teaching this course to your students. There is no way that you could possibly use every single one of these resources. So choose the pieces that are most important to you. So if eSolutions, if you like the idea of being able to provide that worked out step-by-step -step solution, you'll want to use eSolutions. Some of you might want to utilize Sketchpad. Some of you might want to see, well, show me all of the videos um, that are available within this program. Um, if you like the idea of the brain pop movies, these are always fun for the kids. You'll see them all the way um, even through our Algebra 2 program. Um, but do go in and just practice and click on any of these that look interesting to you. Things that I think will be helpful, one is going to be underneath tools. We do have a brand new um, e-toolkit that is available to you. The full video on how to utilize this can be found on my Padlet. So right here, I switched over to my Padlet. You'll see that there is a video on exactly how to navigate through. But these new tools, let me just pique your interest a little bit. These new tools provide um, all sorts of ways for you to really take math to the next lesson with your students. But I also want you to notice that you do have a graphing calculator. So if any of your students um, do not own a graphing calculator or if they're used to utilizing the ones in your classroom and you don't want to have to sanitize them between students, every student has access now to a graphing calculator. Um, but there are all sorts of different tools inside here. So if we want to do things like building fraction models to make it very easy for our students to um, understand, we can actually build, so let me build one that's um, 3 eighths, and we can build that. And so we get the diagram of exactly what that looks like. So there's a great user guide that goes along with this. Um, I just really encourage people to go in and to try the toolkit. And then this is an older version of our virtual manipulatives. There's still some good ones in there. Um, feel free to uh, check those out as well. I'm gonna go back to keyword search and go to all resources. Um, I also want to encourage you to utilize LearnSmart. Um, the LearnSmart system, there is both the teacher guide and the user guide that's there. LearnSmart provides adaptive practice over time for your students. And again, on my Padlet, I have a video that shows you exactly how to utilize this, but it follows in on these five general broad areas um, 
for your students. Let me show you very quickly if I want to add an assignment. I'm going to call this, um, uh, let's see, this is something that is usually kind of a weekly assignment. Um, uh, September 10th. So they would have a week to do this. So maybe I go from the 10th and I give them, I'm not a month to do it. We're going to give them until next week to do that. Um, I'm going to go in module two. And the thing that we're working on right now, I'm going to uncheck all of these because I don't want them to have to do all of those, but we're just going to focus in on, I can do just, just unit rate, or I could do unit rate and proportional relationships and I click assign. Boom, assignment is done. When your students go into there, they will see this tile show up and that is their assignment to do. Um, so when they go into that particular assignment, if you want to try this as a student, you go into try a student. I love that it tells the students it's okay to miss questions as they go into here. Um, this is absolutely a tool that I would use in an asynchronous, a distance learning environment because it adapts to every single child. So it says that they should do this. It should take them less than two hours. That's why I gave them a whole week to do it. And they get a variety of different, um, they'll see their topics, that coach pops up and tells them. So these are questions where they're answering the question, they're indicating their confidence level in answering that question. So um, Zed takes two hours to drive 75 miles, how long will it take him to drive um, 165 to solve his application? The numerator of the second fraction is going to be, um, uh, so let's say that the student's unsure about this answer. They can click unsure. They can click submit. And notice that it gives them, tells them they didn't write anything. They can actually see what the answer should have been. And over here on the side, it gives suggested resources. It goes in and teaches, reteaches that content to the students. So they can see there might be labeling activities that they need to do. There's all you sorts of labels. Oops. Drag I the didn't... labels from the panel on the right hand side to the correct place in the diagram. All right, so hang on, I got the little drag and drop part that's here to do. Um, but that is really how um, that works Let's for them. Learning. So we can go into different parts of this. So they're going to answer these questions, they're going to get their responses over here on the side, and then it adapts and shows them exactly what they are doing inside here. So in this question, it adapted, it said, okay, I didn't understand that one, so let's do the same type of question, so let's do it as true false. So now I have this as a true false question that's here. I'm going to say um, I know the answer that's here, and I'm going to say true, and it gives instant feedback. So if they get it right, they don't have to see all of those additional um, resources, but it adapts the learning plan for the students. So a variety of different question types are showing up inside here. Um, there's a variety of different um, reports. You will see all of this information. The students get a great visual of um, how they're progressing through the course. So this tree grows as they're going through. They can even do a practice quiz. So these are not questions that you, the teacher, are coming up with. This is just if they want to quiz themselves, it will give them five questions that are appropriate to what they need to focus on. So I like to think of Learn Smart as kind of like a co-teacher. Um, that is utilizing maybe flashcards and asking students, um, do you know this? Do you not know this? So if you are interested at all in um, what I just showed you on Learn Smart, please go to the Padlet. In the middle column, it says practice and assignment, and you'll see here is a nine minute video on exactly how to use Learn Smart, as well as a quick start guide for students and a quick start guide for teachers. And then the last part, and I only have a couple more minutes here before we get to our question and answer, I'm going to show you quickly under menu. If I look underneath plan and present, you're going to find that navigation in this screen is to click um, the blue bar and you can get into any one of the chapters and the lessons and you can see this is all of the information on the left hand side is what you would find inside your teacher's edition. 
So if I go to that same um, lesson, you'll see that if I look under launch, here's all the information that's in my teacher's edition, and here are the thumbnail images of the resources that I might choose to use. And again, if I wanted to assign this personal tutor to my students, the gear means that you can do any sort of assigning or sharing even with Google Classroom. Um, just before we finish up, menu, scroll down here underneath assessment. Inside assessment, you do have for every single chapter, you have the PDF and the Word documents. You have those things. You've got a variety of different, you've got quizzes, chapter tests, vocabulary tests. You have multiple forms of a pre-made assessment. So if you need to do um, more kind of level one questions with your students, you would utilize test forms 1A and 1B. But I prefer instead to utilize e-assessment. There is a complete user's guide that goes along with it, but then you can also use my three-page handout, and it shows you how to do, how to create a test very quickly and easily. The upper left-hand corner are banks of what I like to call pure questions. These are questions that your students have not seen on any worksheet, not on any um, uh, handout, anything that's there. None of the information, the answers, this is all just here for your eyes only as a teacher. You can, of course, sort them. You can change the order of them. You can build a test specifically from the questions that you like, and all of that is explained on the handout. If you prefer instead to start with one of our pre-made assessments, you can go in the lower left-hand corner, choose your chapter, and you can find all of the um, assessment masters that are down here across the bottom. You can make a copy of any of them, much as you would if you were going to the copy machine and then planning to um, cut and paste your questions. And then you can do, you can customize and make these tests exactly what you want those tests to be. You can even go so far as to pull questions either from their homework practice worksheet or from any previous test that's there. So if you'd like to spiral back. And just while we're here, if you remember, I said that one of the worksheets has been digitized. That is this homework practice worksheet. So if you assign the homework practice worksheet for your students to do, you can come in the upper left-hand corner. You can assign it to your students to do. Once they do it online, you can come back to here and go to reporting, and you can get a report on exactly what your students did. So you can see we've got a lot of demo kind of ones inside here where people have built classes. Um, but all of that is explained in that handout. There is also an amazing help section in the upper right-hand corner that's right here where you click help. And this is a just a longer kind of way of um, a little bit longer video and such of how to utilize um, e-assessment, but it is definitely one of my favorite tools. It is very easy to come into here. You're going to see benchmark tests and placement tests. Um, if you wanted to give your students the pre-test, um, that diagnostic test to see um, what they already know, I would absolutely do it from right here. Have them, you know, assign it to students to do that diagnostic test. Let our system grade it and give you reports so that you know um, what prerequisite skills your students still need um, assistance with. That is a great tool um, in being able to do that. Um, but super easy. If you customize something and you want to share it with other teachers, it's easy to export and share with other teachers. But it's also just as easy if any of you all ever use anything like um, Quizlet or Kahoot. I have teachers all the time utilizing like maybe one of the forms of the test. They export it as a Word document and they import it into um, Quizlet or Kahoot and the kids can actually um, kind of participate and do things on their phone. So I am gonna stop um, my presentation um, at this point and we'll open it up for any questions. Again, I know that at the very end especially, there was a lot of good stuff that I showed you or I hope you thought it was good stuff. Um, know that if you go to the Padlet, eToolkit, 
the virtual manipulatives information is here. The video on Learn Smart is here. The video on assessment um, is right here. And this handout, I promise you, if you download this, the three pieces of paper that it takes to print that, um, it will definitely be your very best friend. So um, I'm going to stop and see if there are any questions. I guess you've covered everything very thorough, uh, Shetty, and we have no questions. Okay, so just as a reminder for you, um, if you joined late um, or were wondering if we'll show that again, here is the information on how to get to that resources information page. Here is how you can reach me. If, if you have a question, if you're kind of wondering where is that e-toolkit, where do I get to that? Those are the types of questions that you can send to me. Um, if you're trying to order something um, or, uh, or need resources or something like that, those are not things I can help you with, um, but I can help you in understanding anything um, that is within the program itself. And I would much rather you ask me a question and um, allow me to help you with that um, rather than, uh, than for you to not use like something because you're not sure how to do it. But I do promise that there's a lot of good information on the training page. Thank you, Shelley. That was very informative. Okay. I guess we're at the end of our hour now, so I'm just going to share the same. Oh, I, I guess you'll have to stop. Oh, I need to stop sharing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Actually, I think you just take it back. Oh. oh, I see a button. I got it. <laughs> Great. Can you pass me the ball back, Shelley? I did. I just clicked stop sharing. The uh, presenter ball that you have. So if you left click, right click on my name, send. Got it. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Ashley mentioned you, the other questions that you have, that's the email address that you need to pop in. Uh, it's marketing.emia at MH Education. Uh, stay in touch with us on our social channels. As my colleague Afsana mentioned, you will receive the certificate for this webinar as well as the recording of the webinar in a week's time. So watch out for an email that you would be able to download your certificate from and also watch back on this recording. If you have any other questions, please let us know. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Shelley. You're very welcome, anytime. Ladies, I looking at um, one of the participants. I see a question mark that's there. It says, "Is attendee asked a question? Did, did, were we able to answer that?" I think it was Polena because she she is not able to type, and I just saw another question which was at four oh nine. I can't type anything in. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Riza. This attendee has asked a question. I don't see a question from Riza, though. Okay, I'm scrolling down. Does um, Pollyanna had said, does anyone see these messages? Yes, we can see oh. it. Mine just working. Let me see. Um, Riza, maybe you can email us the question at marketing.imia at image education and we can take it through. All right, I think she was just saying thank you so much inside there. So that might have been oh, she just typed that inside there. So um, you are very welcome. We're glad to have had everyone um, here joining us today. And I uh, wish you a, an amazing uh, school year this year. Thank you, everyone. Have a great back to school. Bye. Bye-bye.